Today I'm going to show you how to connect any two routers together and have them share the internet and resources. In other words, you're going to take one router, connect it to another, and they're both going to see the internet. They're both going to allow clients to connect through Wi-Fi or Ethernet, and they both will be able to share data on either side of the router. So basically two routers together, uh, and any two routers will do. In my case, I'm, doing, uh, I'm using a Linksys EA8300 and a TP-Link a a10 both dual Wi-Fi routers and both gigabit routers uh, meaning that they have gigabit Ethernet ports and we are connecting through Ethernet because that is the fastest way to connect two routers in, in actuality unless you've got fiber or something but uh, currently these two the fastest way to connect them in most uh, regular one gigabit routers are Ethernet now uh, we are dealing with gigabit speeds here, so the cable between the two routers is actually important. Since I've upgraded to uh, one gigabit e internet speed, I'm amazed at how many times I've noticed that if I throw a cheap cable onto my network, it slows it all down. You know, my recommendation is that you use Cat 6A, Category 6A cable, as you see here on the screen. But uh, anything will do as long as, you know, if you, all you have is a Cat 4 cable, well, I guess that's better than nothing, so use that. But uh, on a gigabit network, that would be like really choking the speed of the, of the uh, network. Now, if you're using slow routers, routers that are 100 megabit, then you can go down to Cat 5 or Cat 5E, and, it, you know, most likely you're going to get away with it, no problem. Uh, but uh, anything with gigabit, definitely the minimum would be, as far as I'm concerned, Cat 6. If you can use Cat 5E but I don't recommend that. Now, if you don't know what kind of cable you have, here on the screen you can see a piece of cable uh, that is actually Cat6. It's actually printed on the actual cable itself. Now, if your cable doesn't have any printing on it, that probably means it's a cheap old cable and uh, I would upgrade it to something that actually has a printed standard on it like Cat6A. We're gonna go on here and I'll show you how this is all gonna look when it's hooked up. We've got a primary router, which I'm assuming is the one that you have, and you want to extend your network. Maybe you want to run a router out to your office or out to your garage or out to your shed. Who knows, right? And, uh, you know, you want to see the Internet there and you want to be able to connect to it through Wi-Fi or your phone uh, or Ethernet as well. You can also, you will have three ports uh, after this configuration is over of Ethernet on each router, at least these two routers anyway, that will be able to be used to plug in anything you want, a printer, a laptop, a PC, you name it, you know. And it doesn't matter which router you plug it into, it will they'll work on either one and they'll see each other regardless of which router they're on, okay? So that's a really cool thing. You're out in the shed, you can print something in your office uh, through your network. Awesome, right? Uh, by the way, that's something I do all the time, not the shed, but I do print remotely and I love it. Uh, and again, you know, faster the cable, the better, right? So this is what you're going to have. Any, any of these devices on the bottom here can connect to either router and then uh, actually see each other, communicate with each other, and surf the Internet. It's really handy. All right, what's the first thing we need to do to get this done? Well, first thing we need to do is find out what your primary router is. And like I said, it doesn't matter which router you're using. We just need to find out where it is on your network. In other words, what its IP address is. So what we're going to do right here is go down to your network icon. Now, I'm connected to my primary router through uh, Wi-Fi. You might be connected through Ethernet. Regardless, uh, the network icon will be down here on the bottom uh, right of your screen uh, on Windows. Right-click it. Choose Open Network and Internet Settings. And then this will come up. Now, if you're connected through Wi-Fi, go to the Wi-Fi uh, over here on the left column or go to Ethernet if you're on Ethernet. I'm on Wi-Fi, so I'm going to go there. Then we're going to go to the Change Adapter Options over here on the right. And then you'll see that I have one, two, three, four Ethernet uh, or network possible connections, but three of them have red X's on them. That means they're not connected. But my Wi-Fi is. So if you're on Ethernet, then one of your... Uh, Ethernet connections or you know will be con uh, will have no X on it and that'll be the one that's connected so just right click your connection choose status go to details and here you see a bunch of numbers but the ones that matter really are the well the one that matters is the IPv4 default gateway you'll see here that's 192.168.1.1 and generally the DHCP server and DNS server are the same uh, as they're all housed inside your router anyway so Again, the gateway is the one you want. In my case, it's 192.168.1.1. Yours may be different, but it doesn't matter. 
just write down what you've got there and I'll show you how to handle it if your numbers are different than mine because uh, you know, again, we're going to learn a little bit about networking today, but uh, yeah, you can definitely do this, even if the numbers aren't the same as mine. So let's minimize this out of the way. Okay, so we'll go back. Now we know that my router and your, uh, is on 192.168.1.1, as I have here on my slide. Now, again, yours may be in a different place. Whatever your number was for the default gateway, write that down, note it somewhere, and keep it uh, you know, near you because we're going to need it, right? Now, again, like I say here on my on my slide, don't worry about it. If it's a different number, I will show you how to handle it. Next thing you're going to do with your secondary router is actually reset it to factory defaults. Now, if you don't know how to do that and if it's not done the same way or you can't find out, like you don't have a reset uh, port like mine does or, you know, you can't figure it out, go to your manufacturer's uh, web page for your router and uh, find your model and see if you can see it in the manual if it tells you how to reset the router. Sometimes there's a setting inside the router like you can log into the router and actually tell, you know, say, tell it to go to default settings. But that's far too complicated and this is way easier. We're, I'm just going to manually reset the router and I'll show you how I do it and how it generally works. Uh, as you can see on the picture, there's, there's a reset portal. I'm going to use a toothpick because number one, it doesn't conduct electricity. Number two, it's soft. And number three, it, if I was statically charged, it won't zap the board inside. So this is a good thing to use. So you see now that uh, right now that the lights, whatever, I've got three lights on the front. So I'm going to hit that. And then I'm going to wait for those lights to cycle. That's it. Now I let go of it. And now we wait for this to reboot. So that's how you reset your router. Now, the reason you want to set it to default settings is because you don't know what's been set before. And, uh, you know, you don't want to deal with anything that's in there that, you know, may mess you up. So that basically turns the router back to the day that you took it out of the box. Now, read my warning here. If there are settings or passwords or things that you want to save out of that router, make sure you save them before you do that. So... Uh, again, careful with that and make sure you know how to reset the router and how to get into it prior to doing this as well, okay? But that's how you do it on my router. I already know how to get into it. And in my case, uh, it's pretty simple. But some routers, when you do that, you're going to have a default username or a default ID and a default password. On a Linksys, I believe it's admin, admin, uh, and I no, admin password. And on a TP Link, it's admin, admin. Netgear varies. But again, check your manufacturers for the default passwords if you need it, right? And again, check all that prior to hitting the reset. So that, uh, you know, if, if the only way to do it is to get into it, then, you know, do that. But again, follow those directions. So now it's uh, probably rebooted at this point. So that's good. Uh, that's what we want. Next thing we're going to do is connect that router, and I'm going to do that too, to your PC or to your uh, laptop. Right now I'm showing the PC, and uh, you can see on the top slide here that I have it plugged into an Ethernet port uh, on the back of my PC, and then to the LAN, one of the LAN ports. Those are the yellow ports. I will never use, we won't use the, the blue internet port on this router uh, at all for this configuration. Everything goes into the LAN ports. There's, you know, basically no use for the internet port in this configuration. But anyway, we've got the ethernet cable going to one of the LAN ports there. Now, if you don't have a LAN port on the back of your uh, PC, uh, I recommend getting one of these. This is a, a USB 3 to uh, Ethernet, one gigabit Ethernet uh, network adapter, and they're under $15. Again, I'll put links for this stuff in the video description. Go there and use them. They help my channel, so uh, please do that. Also, they don't cost you any more than going directly to Amazon. So, uh, you know, again, you help me and it doesn't cost you anything. So do me a favor, use the links in the video description. But you can use one of those for uh, the Ethernet connection, as you can see in the bottom uh, slide. Okay, so let's go next. Now, if you don't have a PC, you can use a laptop. Again, uh, if your PC has an Ethernet jack, like the top one here, my top uh, one has, then do that. Now, I bought this Ethernet adapter because actually my jack uh, broke. There's no, I, oh, I didn't, it didn't break. I broke it, and the lock is is no longer functioning. So, you know, I put a, a cable in there, and it slips out all the time. So I bought this, and that solved the problem because this still locks, and it just plugs into the USB port works like a charm. You can see that here at the bottom 
a slide. So uh, those are your options for connecting it. I'm going to connect mine or connect the router myself. There we go, in the LAN port. Now, what we're going to do is turn Wi-Fi off. You see that I, I say it on the slide here a couple times. So I'm going to click on the Wi-Fi, and we're going to turn it off. Now, the reason we're turning Wi-Fi off is that we don't want to be connected to two networks at one time or to your primary router and your secondary router at the same time. We want to deal with just the one. So right now, all we have is the router plugged in, in my case, as you see back in this slide, into the uh, PC by itself. That's it. Now we need to find the address of the secondary router, the one we're going to use as a secondary router. And the way you do that is exactly the same way as you uh, found the, the IP address for the primary. Go down here to networks, open the network uh, and internet settings. This time we're going to ethernet because we should be connected through ethernet. Change adapter options on the right. And now see what Wi-Fi is no longer connected. But I got two X's and one network connection right here. Right click it, choose status, go to details, and then you can see that the default gateway on this one is 192.168.0.1. So that's my IP address for my router. Again, yours might be different. Don't worry about that. I will show you how to handle these numbers no matter what the numbers are. In my case, it's uh, 192.168.0.1, as you can see here on this uh, uh, slide. Once again, write it down so that, uh, and, and make sure you write, you know, secondary, this is the number, primary, this is the number, because you don't want to get confused and uh, mix that up. Next thing we're going to do is log into the secondary router at 192.168.0.1. That's my IP address. Whatever number you got on that last procedure, use that number. I'm going to open up my browser. It's 192.168.0.1. There we go. Visit that. Just hit enter. And because I reset it, uh, this router does not go back to, to a state where it has a default username and password because the companies found out that that was insecure. So in this router, what you need to do after you reset it to factory defaults or the way it came out of the box is you had to put your password in first thing. So I'm going to do that and uh, definitely use something that, you know, it, it thinks is strong. Um, in my case, I am. It says hi there, as you can see. There we go. And then just click on let's get started. Uh, now, what we want to do is complete the initial setup. So the, the bottom line is, though this is basically setting you up to get on the Internet, we're not going to use this router to connect to a, a cable modem or a fiber modem or any modem. Uh, we're going to use this router to connect to another router. So we won't be using the uh, Internet link part of this router, which is the blue port I showed you at the beginning. So here we're just going to choose to definitely set the right time. Time on a network is important. So central time. Uh, then auto detect on this one. Generally go through the, through the defaults. You should be fine. Uh, again, next on this, do not clone my MAC address. Uh, this, I'm going to shadow out the uh, uh, default passwords that mine has. But And I'm going to change here. The uh, uh, th This is your, excuse me, but this is your Wi-Fi setup for the secondary router. So, I, again, you're going to be able to connect to it through uh, Wi-Fi and through Ethernet. So, you're going to have to set up the SSIDs for this case, because it's a two-band uh, router, it has 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz uh, band. So uh, that means it's got two connection points. So I'm going to just change it to uh, something that makes sense. Uh, se so secondary router, and that's uh, 2.4 G or gigahertz. So I'm going to just put 2.4 G, put in a password here. Um, Okay. All right, there we go. I'm going to call it happy times one, uh, happy times exclamation mark, and those are dollar sign and exclamation mark there. Uh, again, do the second thing on this one. And uh, all right, uh, so it makes something that makes sense. So secondary. Now you can make these uh, anything you want them to be, uh, any name you want for your SSIDs, for your, your Wi-Fi SSIDs, but um, up to you 
I like I like it to make sense. Now, a lot of people want to clone the same. Oh, I, I have you know uh, natural Wi-Fi on on my first one. I want to put it on the second one so that I don't have to switch. No, don't do that. I'll, I'll put a, a, a link up here showing you uh, the best practices on multiple SSIDs in the same environment. Uh, you can do it that way, but I don't recommend it. And if you watch that video, you'll know why. So here, I'm going to uh, mirror the same password. And uh, here we're going to go next. And you, you could have disabled Wi-Fi if you didn't want on that last screen. But uh, here it is, the, the you know breakdown. And you might want to take a picture of this so you can remember it. Uh, in case you forget. So here we're gonna hit save. I think I hit save. Okay, yeah, I hit save and now the router is rebooting. So we're gonna let that happen. We've got the router set up, ready to go. Now we need to you know, let that reboot and then we're gonna configure it. We've got my number now, 192.168.0.1. Let's go forward. Step six is set IP address on the secondary router so that it will work with a primary router. Well, what does that mean? Well. Currently, the IP address that the secondary router has is not going to mesh with the IP address that the primary router has. Uh, the IP address sets the network and the client on the routers, and uh, the, those two numbers will not mesh. And you'll see why, and I'll teach you how to do this and figure this out. Uh, so no matter what numbers you find, even if they're different than mine, you'll still be able to make it work. So the primary IP address uh, or primary router IP address is 192.168.1.1. And uh, of course, they're my IP addresses. And the secondary is 192.168.0.1. Now, if you're lucky and yours are the same, then you can follow this video and follow my settings and it will work per perfectly. But that's if you're lucky. Uh, you may have the exact reverse of this and, uh, or a different number over here or a different number both places. But regardless, if you follow the rules I'm going to show you next, you'll be able to figure this out and make it work. All right, so here are the possible combinations. There's some of them, and there's way more than this, too. Uh, so, yeah, that looks a little confusing, and it's like, oh, my gosh, my head, right? No, no, no. Don't worry about it. If you follow the rules, you'll be able to figure all this out. You could actually solve for any of those numbers uh, easily, and you'll see how here in a minute. All right, those numbers have meanings. The first three octets or the first, you know, three sets of numbers are the network ID and uh, the last number is the fourth octet or the fourth number uh, is the client ID. What does that mean? That means that you have uh, a network uh, uh, name which or number which is 192.168.1 uh, on the first primary router and you have a network name on the second router or a number on the second router which is 192.168.0. Uh, now, there are rules to this, and the clients on both of those ne uh, ne networks are one and one, meaning that this is client number one on this network, and this is client number one on this network. Okay, so um, again, don't get too crazy about it, but uh, I'll explain it even further. Okay, so this is what we got. We got rules for networking, and uh, these rules generally apply to most home networks because they use this uh, number, the 192168 number for the network, okay? So regardless, follow these rules. Networks ha uh, numbers have to match uh, on both devices in order for them to talk or to actually exist on the same network. So in this case, you can see I got 192.168.1 over here for the network number and 192.168.0 over here for the network number. So if you connected these two routers together, they would not talk. They would not see each other. And the client number is one on both of them. And, uh, you know, again, the rule for the client numbers is that when you're on the same network, they need to be unique. In other words, they can't be the same. You can't have one, two 192.168.1.1 clients on the same network. It would just knock both of them out or one of them out. So what we need to do is we need to change the IP address of our secondary router. We're not changing anything on the primary. We don't have to. We leave that alone. That number stays the same. We just deal with the second router and connect it to the primary, right? And that way everything on your home network stays the way it was when you started. Uh, you know, the thing you want to avoid doing is creating an IP conflict with the primary router, which would could pro probably or uh, stop the network from working, okay? Maybe, uh, or maybe it would just adjust, but regardless, don't do it. So what do we have? Uh, we've got 
uh, we need to put this router, the secondary, on the primary. We've got 192.168.0.1 uh, as the primary number, uh, or as, a, as a, its IP address. Need to change that number from 192.168.1 uh, to match the network on the primary router. So both networks are now, or both uh, numbers are now the same. So they will both talk to each other because they will exist on the same network. So that we got right. But the rules, right? Can't have two clients on the same network with the same number. And what do we got here? 192.168.1.1. And down here, we got 192.168.1.1. Now, if we did this, we would create an IP conflict. And like I said, mayhem. So don't want this. It wouldn't work, right? So what you want, want to do is follow the rules and change that second number to something else other than one. In my case, I'm gonna use two, which is perfect. So router number one, client number one. Router number two, client number two, right? So now, uh, so if you wanna log into this router, you you put this number into the uh, address bar on your, on your uh, browser. If you wanna log into this uh, router, you put this number into address bar on your uh, browser and you'd be looking at this router. So let's, you know, so now we know which that we have the, the, the right system for this to work. Now, if you have any other numbers as the first three numbers, like 192.168.2 or 0, then you would just change that over here to 198.168, sorry, 192.168.0 over here or 2 or whatever you had uh, as the first three numbers on that IP address. So that's all you got to do. Match that network and make sure that the client numbers, once you match those uh, numbers, are different. We've determined what IP addresses are, are good and working for us or will work for us. And I'm going to take this number, 192.168.2, and put it into the router. Now, it should have rebooted at this point. Let's go here uh, to the next step, which is step seven. Uh, we're going to put this IP address into that router. Okay, so set the IP address on the secondary router. The way we do that is by logging into it. Uh-oh. Okay, well, it reset to 192.168.0.1, which is where it's supposed to be, but it says failed. Well, what that means is that this router is not happy because it's not connected to the Internet. There's no Ethernet. Uh, it's not connected to a modem in the Internet port. We don't use the Internet port at all, and we don't connect it in a traditional way to the Internet, so it doesn't matter. Here, just hit Finish, and we get to the default web page, and you can see the Internet's not on, which is fine. It, and uh, it will always show that because we're not connecting to the internet through the internet port. So don't worry about that. That's fine. So what we want to do here is change the IP address. So we're going to go here to advanced. Now your router may have this stuff in different places, but all routers have the ability to change the IP address and there's a LAN setting somewhere on your router. Okay, so find it, go to it. In this case, uh, it's under advanced and network and LAN. You can see here I got 192.168.0.1, which references that, this up here, see? So it's the same. Uh, we need to change that to 192.168.1.2 in order to plug it into the other router and have everything work. Let's do that. There we go. Okay. So dot one, oops. Dot one, dot two. That's all you have to do. So hit save here. And it says, okay, it's going to reboot. So I'm going to let that happen. Okay. So I'm going to let this reboot. And, uh, you know, I'll just because this takes about two, three minutes, I'll uh, stop the, the I'll, I'll cut it here and, and move on to when it's done. All right. It's rebooted and it automatically went to the new IP address, which was 192.168.1.2. And, uh, that's great, but if yours didn't, just put the address back, uh, the address to, that you put in there, 192.168.1.2, or whichever address you figured out you needed to uh, put in to match the one on your primary router. Uh, you know, and that should take you to it. If it doesn't work, just reset the router and try it again and make sure you got the numbers correct, okay? So here we're gonna log in. Okay, so we're logged in. Now we're gonna go back to my slide here for, for the next step. Okay, so log back in. We've done that, right? 
Next thing we're going to do is turn off something called Dynamic uh, Host Configuration Protocol, or DHCP. It's a server in, inside the router that gives out IP addresses uh, to all the clients that connect to the, to the router automatically. So you don't have to do this with every client that connects to your, to your network. We're going to turn that off because your primary router has that running on it already, and it will do that job for every client on the network, including ones that connect to this router, uh, you know, remotely. So uh, it's got that job handled. Two DHCP servers can cause mayhem. We don't want that. So at this point, uh, we're going to turn that off. So we're logged into it here, and uh, we're going to go to Advanced again, and we're going to go Network. And there's DHCP server. It's pretty basic. Uh, you've got an enable check mark here. So basically disable it. Make sure that you turn it off however you turn it off on your router. Generally, again, under the network settings in advance, you'll see DHCP. And here we're going to click on save. And at this point, we're done configuring the router for what it needs to uh, be set to to connect to the other router and be connected. So we're done here. Um, just minimize this out of the way. We'll go to the next step. Uh, I could double check here. I did hit save. Yep. Now we've got to physically connect the two routers together. Uh, this is what it looks like you know, in, in graphics. Uh, we've got the uh, cable modem hooked into the internet on the primary router. Uh, we've got, and then we're going to take an ethernet cable and run it from any of the LAN ports, in this case, uh, blue on this router and to any of the yellow ones on this router, complete opposite. We don't use the internet port on the secondary router ever, okay? But once you do that and you connect the two routers together, they should be talking to each other. They should be able to see each other. They should be able to, to share connections between the two of them. Both will have Wi-Fi working. Both will allow you to, to uh, surf the internet. And whatever you plug into the LAN ports on the secondary router, the, the three that are left over will work just like if you plug them into the, the three that are left over in the primary router. So you can hook up printers, uh, you can hook up other computers, PCs, laptops, whatever, uh, onto those, even game machines, onto those uh, LAN ports on uh, either the secondary or the primary. And if you use a reasonably fast, if you use a CAT6 or CAT6A, which is what I suggest, cable between the two of them, you probably won't notice any speed difference between connecting to the primary and the secondary, as long as your two routers are basically of equal speed or equal performance as far as, you know, the, the, the guts, the CPU, the engines inside them. In this case, they're pretty close, so they would, you probably would not notice a difference. Uh, here's what it looks like in real, in, in real life, or IRL as they say, uh, you know, cable, cable. There's the uh, uh, internet connection. We don't use the blue port at all. We've got three extra ports on the primary, uh, sorry, on the secondary, and there's, though you can't see that, there's three on the secondary, uh, sorry, on the primary as well. So six total ethernet ports on this configuration. Uh, and now you have Wi-Fi on, in two different areas of your house, if you wish, and two different, uh, actually at this point, four different SS, uh, uh, D, SSIDs. So, again, you can figure that the way you wish. I had a link up there for how to handle the SSIDs. So, at this point, we're set up. Uh, what we want to do is we want to test them out. All right, so how do we test it? Well, first of all, I got them connected. I haven't yet, but I will. It won't take me a second. There we go. I'm connected to the back of that router with the, the secondary. So, right now, my secondary is connected to the back of the primary. It should be ready to go, and it is. So at this point, um, we got to turn Wi-Fi back on. In my case, because I turned it off. If you had it on, turn it, uh, and you turned it off, like, as I told you, let's turn it back on again. All right. So I'm going to connect to the uh, Linksys. Well, automatically it goes to the Linksys, and that's my primary router. It says connected. Let's go up here. Open this up. So even though I'm connected to my primary router, I should be able to still see the, the secondary router. And the way you check that is just, you know, put 192.168.1.2 into the uh, address bar or whatever number that you came up with. 
and you can see I'm still connected to it even though I'm connected to the Linksys, not the other router because the two are now connected, they're in the same network and they're sharing information, no problem at all, as it should be. Uh, internet, you know, I, I, don't, I don't know if you can disable it here, no, I guess you can't. Anyway, doesn't matter. You know, this will always show no internet because we're on, on the secondary router because we're not connecting to the internet through the internet port. So, um, back here, you see all the stats. Over here, you'll see wireless. So, currently, I'm on the primary router looking at the secondary router. Let's do this in reverse. And let's go here to wireless settings. And... IPS, maximum wireless... Yeah, wireless settings. Here we go. Okay, so we here here you can see that it says happy times dollar sign plus uh, dollar sign exclamation uh, for the uh, password. I'm just going to copy that to make it real easy to get onto. Right now, um, let's connect through Wi-Fi to it, and you can see here that I have secondary router 2.4 g, uh, g or 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz. I'm just going to connect to that. I don't want to connect automatically. Connect. I'm going to paste the uh, password in there and next and boom we're connected and secured notice it doesn't say that we're not on the internet so as long as it says connected and secured you're good so let's so check the internet here uh, let's go to google.com no problem right you see that we're working here Feeling lucky. I don't know what that means. No idea. A random number generator. I guess that's where I started, finished. Uh, anyway, so we're obviously browsing the internet. Um, let's see if we can see the primary router. We should be able to, no problem. Now we know that the primary router in my case is 192.168.1.1. So put that into the address bar, hit enter, and there's my Linksys. Even though I'm connected to the other router. So everything sees each other. It's like like it, it doesn't matter which router you connect to it all looks and feels the same if I wanted to set up a printer on the primary router and print from the secondary router no problem if I want to set up a printer on the secondary router and print from the primary router no problem works either way it's like you know it's it's basically transparent at this point all right so we've got this all set up I guess the only other thing we can do is uh, maybe connect to it through a LAN port, I guess. We'll try that. Here. There we go. So I'm going to connect to the back of this router, the secondary, with an Ethernet jack to the PC. There we go. And I'm going to turn off Wi-Fi so that you can see that I'm only connecting through uh, Ethernet. There we go. And it even tells you connected. It says no Internet, but it, it'll it'll pick up on that. Uh, okay, so now at this point I should be able to see the 192.168.1.2, which is the primary router, no problem, right? Let's see if we can get back to the other one, 1.1, no problem, perfect. And you can see over here that Windows has finally recognized that it's on the internet, so it says just says connected, not no internet. So here we're going to type in. Uh, let's go to Google again. Here we go. No problem. I guess we're going to click on feeling lucky. There we go. Weird stuff going on here, but obviously we're connected, no problem. Uh, and that's on the secondary router through Ethernet. So, again, that's how you set all this up. Okay, so if you want to, and again, this works on any two routers as long as you follow the rules and uh, you log in and change the settings that I show on the secondary. You don't have to do anything on the primary other than find out what its IP address is. And as you can see, it works. Uh, that's it for my video. If you like this video and it helped you out in some way, do me a huge favor. Give me a thumbs up. Give me a like at the bottom there. That helps me on the uh, YouTube algorithm and uh, helps my channel. And I greatly appreciate it. Also, if you like my content and you want to see more, subscribe to my channel. Hit the subscribe button at the bottom right-hand corner. And uh, 
Then as part of that process, you'll see a bell icon, click on the bell icon, and then you, that's the notification bell. Then you'll be notified every time I put up a new video and you can watch it at your own leisure. Uh, as well, uh, comment section, any questions, suggestions, definitely video suggestions, I love those. Uh, put them in the comment section. I do look in there re regularly. You guys can talk to each other through the comment section as well uh, about the video. I'd like that. Share the video as well. I love that. Uh, also, anything you want to say to me, uh, thanks, you know, suggestions, whatever, put it in the comment section. Really, really appreciate your input. And I do respond to those regularly. And regularly, I make videos from what the suggestions that people make or questions that people ask in the comment section below. In the video description below will be links to all the hardware that I use in this video. Uh, please use those links as it helps my channel uh, by being affiliate uh, links. And it doesn't cost you any more uh, that, than it just going directly to Amazon or eBay to get these things. So do me a favor. If you're going to buy something uh, like a cable, Cat 6A, in the, uh, go in the video description and uh, use those links to buy it. Like I said, it doesn't cost you any more than going directly to Amazon and you help me out. That I greatly appreciate as well. Other than that, I think that's about it. All right. Thank you so much for watching. I really, really appreciate it. Once again, and like always, stay healthy, stay happy, and we will see you on the next video.